Hello, and welcome to my basic canasta lesson. I'm Lindsay One, and I'll be playing on Canasta Junction. When you lo first log in, you'll see a screen like this. And if you're a new player, you'll what you'll want to do <clears throat> is go to the versus ACE, which is their um, robot uh, canasta, and um, let's just start a game with three robots. The automatic table rules are base of five. Now, base of five is what's commonly played in American, New American Canasta, so we're going to go with the their rules. Um, they say you may not go out with a pair in a wild card, and their special hands are embedded as uh, regular pairs, um, zip code, and um, Palm Beach pairs. So let's get started so we can discuss some of the strategy. You know, if you remember, um, in this website, the um, person who's playing always goes first. In a normal game, the person who goes first rotates around the table, whoever is the person to the uh, left of the dealer. So that's a little bit of an aberration here. You replace your threes, and you draw cards uh, until you have 14 cards. So in order to meld, I'm going to need a natural three of a kind. And, but I'll need the first important point is that I need 125 points it's in the start of a game, both you, you and your opponents do. When you're playing, you'll want to keep a special eye on the discards of your left-hand opponent. In case the opponent's milled, you'll want to have a good understanding or, or try to visualize what is in the opponent's hand. So my opponent discarded four. I think my partner did. It's out of my, my right-hand opponent, so... <clears throat> I'm going to hold on to my fours in case the opponents meld, and that's because I am have a hand that is nowhere near melding. So I'm going to play a defensive strategy where I'm going to um, discard anything that I don't need, hold on to cards that might be useful, discards later on, and hope that my partner melts. So my, this opponent mel, uh, discarded a 5, my opponent discarded a 7. That's nice. When they discard a 7, it generally means that they are holding two other 7s. And if I were to pick up a 7, I would be able to discard it safely and know that my partner was guarding the 7. <clears throat> this is a hand that is nowhere near melding, however, and, and would be, in a regular game, uh, a challenge to be holding three aces. More than two aces in your hand... If the game is over, if the opponent's meld, would be a, a twenty a, a 1,500 point penalty. Not worth the risk if your side is never going to meld. However, this site plays a special hand called zip code, which is worth 2,500 points. And since I'm nowhere near melding, I'm going to go for a zip code hand, which would be four of a kind, four of a kind, I'm sorry, four of a kind, three of a kind, three of a kind, two of a kind, and two of a kind. I will have that special hand if I just pick up either a fourth ace, a fourth king, or a fourth eight. So I'm going to give it a few. Ah, here we go. I had no wild cards. I was never going to be able to meld. If the opponents melded, I had kept a couple of fours as safe discards. And now my hand shaped up to become a special hand. Even though I have no wild cards and cannot meld, I have four of a kind, four kings, three aces, three eights. So that's four, three, three, two, and two of any combination. In this game, I hit the special, and it says I ended the hand with the zip code hand. So it, it's called a pair's hand, just meaning a special hand. They don't have the correct terminology. And for that special hand, I get 2,500 points for a hand I was never going to be able to meld. Uh, my partner might have had the three of a kind and one big joker, but in any event, we're well on in the regular game. I would be worth a dollar, and or and I did it fast enough in the game that the, before the opponents had melded, so everything in their hands was negative. So now we're still at one twenty-five. That's the amount we need to meld. So are the opponents. I go first again, as I said, a bit of a flaw because after going first last hand, my left-hand opponent should be going first. Nice picking up some wild cards there. I have a natural three of a kind. I'm well on my way to either melding or 
starting wild card canasta. I'm just gonna, I threw a random eight. Keep note of my left-hand opponent threw a four, my partner threw a five, and my right-hand opponent threw a four. Once again, I'm gonna keep these little fours for later on in the game, while trying to decide how to melt. I could melt now. I have a clean three of a kind. I have enough points. I can put these wild cards. I can put it one. I can put jokers with the kings, a pair of kings, or a pair of fours. So I easily could meld now. But let's just say I picked up another wild card. I might be tempted to go with a wild card canasta. Uh, I might wait and see what happens if the opponents meld with several wild cards. I might uh, hold off on my decision. And my partner made kind of a. Uh, risky discard of the. Alright, I don't need this ace to meld. They meld with only two wild cards and close this with an ace. I still could have the decision to meld with wild cards. Let's see what happens when they get in fifth position, how many wild cards they put down. So I'm gonna wait and see. Hmm. This looks like a safe discard because my left hand opponent melded with 10. Now they're in that fifth position here. They close the jack with one wild card. I could pick up the deck here, or I could, like, once again, pick up another card and decide what to do. I'm going to hold off on my decision. I'm going to pick up again. So... Here, there's one, two, three, four wild cards that they've used. I have a safe discard, so I'm going to wait and see if they close the sixes. If they close the eighth with another wild card, then I, I may not meld with my wild cards. But we have a bit of an advantage in our 2,500 points. I, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it here. I'm going to take a chance on my four wild cards. They're only showing four. There's a total of 12 wild cards in the deck. Let's see what happens. All right. My partner closed the wild card canasta. They had three out of the remaining four wild cards. There were four here. There's still one wild card out and about. I. Well, now that I have extra threes, it might not have been worth it. So here, here's one lesson. The threes that you're that you put down and replace. Assuming you know the basic um, scoring, uh, when you're when you put down your threes, if you have no canastas, threes count against you uh, in by by color. So uh, one red three is is a hundred points. Two is three hundred points. Three is five hundred points, and all four red threes are worth a thousand points. Same for the blacks. So there's a a a swing of two thousand points if you had all of the threes. If you have no canastas. They count against you 2,000 points. If you have one one canasta, they're neutralized. The effect is neutralized. And if you have two canastas, they count in your favor. Had I known I would had all these threes, I might have made a normal meld and been able to close two canastas very easily. I might have had more points than the uh, 2,000 points I got for the wildcard canasta. But let's see. The game's not over. There's still the opportunity uh, to close the second. Close, sorry, to close the second canasta. And to actually get a, a plus, a positive um, score for our threes, but let's just see what happens. Now, with only one draw remaining, it's unlikely. And I think we're too far along for me to take the deck because the opponents already took the deck at one point. <clears throat> so I'm not going. To take that risk, I'm just going to put down all my positive points that I have. See, all my partner needs to do is to draw that last wild card of queen. Ah, well, they actually got the last wild card. They just needed another queen. Too bad. So we had the chance of actually collecting our threes and getting a huge bonus. Um... Meanwhile, we kept our score under 5,000, so we only need 155 to meld. Had we had a another 150 points we'd be at, at uh, I'm sorry another yeah another 150 points we would have been at 5,000 and we would have needed 180 points to mill so I uh, maybe not taking advantage of the score 
helped us. Now I have one of these other lo lovely hands that is never going to meld at 155. And I'm going to play very conservatively. Having picked up this big joker, there's no point for me to try to go for a zip code hand. So I'm going to discard my uh, penalty seven, stay at two sevens. Having signaled my partner that I will, that I had three sevens initially, and I will keep these last two sevens until death do us part. And therefore, if my partner has more than one wild card, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll know that it's safe for them to discard any of their sevens. That wasn't the best move. I might have gotten sloppy because of our high score. So clearly a nine where I had five of them would have been a better, possibly a better discard. Although I have to, I do have to say that in my defense, I was sort of fantasizing about uh, another special way to meld, which is that if you have a natural seven of a kind, you can go down no matter what the point value is. You can go down with only 70 points. I could have gone down with seven natural nines. It's called a splash um, at any point, at any, at any uh, melding requirement at 125, 155, or 180. So in my defense, I didn't discard the ultra safe nine in the off chance that I might have picked up the seven nines and been able to meld. Now let's see what I have here. I have 20, 40, 90, 100, I'm 10, 20, 30. I have 150. I'm awfully close to 155. I need another 10, an ace, or a wild card before they go out. So let's see what happens. Ah, interesting. So the opponents are discarding a, a deuce there. In a normal game, this deuce could have actually gone on the jacks and this person could have gone out. Only in this Canasta Junction, for some reason, the robots are, are not allowed to go out. And uh, that gives me the opportunity to use my six nines that I carefully preserved in my one wild card to close that Canasta. Once again, oh, picked up an extra three along the way. And what, oh, that's interesting. I would have had the seventh nine. I was just too uh, anxious to get a plus score. Now, in a normal game, once I had signaled the sevens, my partner would have thrown in all their sevens, but because I'm playing with robots, uh, they don't quite understand the signaling. <laughs> so possibly my partner would have, been able to, would have been able to meld much earlier had they, in a real game, understood that my seven discard early on meant I was keeper of the sevens, and they could have gotten rid of these and possibly melded earlier in the game. Meanwhile, we closed two canastas. I can't complain. We need now 180 points to meld, and the opponents went right, need 155. That's because their their net score is over 3,000. But they're just a hairline over 3,000, so in a real game, that's the worst position to be in. Of course, the hand I have is possibly the worst position to be in. We need almost 2,000 points, and I have a hand that is fairly ugly for melding purposes. 
here my seven discard should signal to my partner that I am keeper of the sevens. But my experience tells me that since they did not understand the signal last time, and if they have sevens, they're probably keeping them, that I I should or will discard my sevens when the opportunity presents itself, or let's say my hand starts to improve, I will throw my sevens. Here I'm keeping them because I have the chance of a pair's hand. Oh, not after my partner melt. But you see these? Uh, I have no triple. And had I picked up a big joker to match this big joker, and I had, as long with my natural pairs, I had two aces and two sevens, I would have had a, a 2,000 point pairs hand. And meanwhile, I'm going to hold on to my pair of tens and nines that match my partner's meld in the hopes of getting the deck. I guess they were never going to throw me one of their tens since they melded with them, but I'm perfectly happy. Take the deck with the king. I'm not going to be hasty about putting down my tens because I have more important things to do. Hopefully my partner will understand that um, when I discard these sevens that I am in danger of having a penalty in my hand. So now as we get down to all the threes have been um, are already out of the deck, I'm only going to have two more turns. I really won't have a chance to get clean. I know I'm going to be stuck with a 1500 point penalty, so at this point, I'm going to close everything I can. Having picked, When I picked up that extra seven, uh, that was a menace. So I'm going to put down everything I can. And I would normally have thrown away my ace because I won't have a chance to get clean. I would have thrown away higher point value cards. So at the point where I had the five sevens, uh, I playing with the computer. There was a, I might have taken a risk and put them down because this, the computer does not understand to throw in their sevens. Had I once I signaled the first time, uh, but it, if you did that with a normal player. Let's just try to play the normal strategy and not try to overthink the computer strategy. So here we are. We are still at uh, 180. We got a net plus score even with my seven penalty. Um, so we're getting closer to the end zone. I, I wasn't watching. I guess the opponent either didn't close any canasses, but they went backwards and now they only need 125 to meld. See my partner discard it by four. I was not paying enough attention. So here we go. I have um, uh, 20, 40, 90, 100, 110, 120, 30, 40. I have 150 points. 
in 160 points in my hand. I'm just one deuce or one ace away from having a meldable hand at 180. So if I discard um, improperly and, and, and the opponents pick up the deck, so be it. I It's worth the risk for us to meld, get two canastas, and win the game, even if we have to end up giving them the sevens, natural sevens. So look at this now. This is interesting. All right, a little glitch in the computer. See how yeah, it's not allowing me to close that? It's saying I can't close a canasta. I can't close a canasta. It's a little messed up here. My partner melded, so I'm not closing a canasta with my initial meld. It's a glitch, another one, another one of the hundred glitches with this program. It's it is assuming that that I melded, it's not allowing me to close this canasta. So I'm gonna actually do what I can. And once I discard, I'm gonna get another three card to Lonnie, even though my partner was the one who melded and got a three card to Lonnie, see? And having done that, it now gave me the opportunity to win the game by getting that extra salon, gave me my fifth jack. And an extra king, so I could use my wild cards to close the jacks and have two canastas. This game should be over. I'm, I say should because my partner might still do something incredibly stupid such as uh, pick up the deck dirty with aces and sevens. It's very hard to predict what the computer uh, uh, my brain will will try. All right. I only have one card. Okay, here we are at the end of the game. Going to return to the lobby. Thank you very much for watching this. Uh, and... Uh, I would have liked it to be a pure lesson in how to play Canasta, but um, unfortunately the computer glitches forced me to interject some reasoning as to how to play with against the robots, not pure Canasta. We'll do better next time.